Hi everyone, and welcome back to another of my history videos. Now, this one is going to have a content warning. A lot of what I'm going to explain in this episode does have a lot to do with political rhetoric nowadays, and based on evidence, what we can tell about what our Founding Fathers thought of religion. And, and also, what role does the Enlightenment have to play in all this, and why did the United States not establish a founding religion for the United States? So, context. So a lot of the a lot of the colonies, specifically the thirteen colonies, were founded with a colonial religion or official religion, or had a religious preference. Um, a Maryland, for instance, started out Catholic. Um, the southern colonies leaned more towards the Anglican Church, or the Church of England, slash soon-to-be Episcopalian Church. Uh, then you have the Northern Colonies, who lean more towards Congregationalists, what we would nowadays sort of align with what I would call um, Presbyterian, slash Calvinist. And a lot of the male colonies were a mix. Um, so, and what it means to be an established church is your taxes go to the church. Like, a portion of your taxes goes to the church, the state funds the church, and... And even if you don't go to that church or are part of that organization, you do have to pay taxes. And this is actually where I do have to mention Rhode Island just because that state's slash colony's early history was such a mess. They were such a troll. Um, so Rhode Island, for the most part, became a location of exiles, both political and religious. Uh, for instance, whenever the Puritans did not like someone, they would often send them to what's nowadays Rhode Island, and for a lot of intents and purposes, it kind of became the colony slash state that no one liked. And part of that is because and I kid you not, after the American Revolution, in order to try to pay off some of its debts, it, it pushed out so many debased bonds and money that, that when everyone realized it was worthless, it tanked so many neighboring states' economies and banking systems that Basically, Rhode Island kind of was the state that pushed everyone towards accepting a constitution. And when Rhode Island wanted to try as long as possible not to join the union and sign the constitution, everyone agreed that, hey, we'll just be the, we'll just be the United States except Rhode Island, and we'll just embargo them. Which is not good when you're a coastline state and your main source of revenue is imports, exports, and shipping. So, anyway, Rhode Island is kind of important in the sense that it was often the state a lot of people ran to uh, whenever they were 
they were a political religious dissenter. So, and then you have Pennsylvania, which was founded based along Quaker lines, but they also had several other minority religions. And around this time as well, there was a slow... This will become important later. Around this time as we're gearing towards the Seven Years' War or the French and Indian War, you had the you had this wave of religious thought, aka the First Great Awakening, which will free your Baptists, your Methodists, your Mormons, your all of these nowadays very large, important religious groups that outside of Lutheranism and Catholicism are still some of the biggest churches in the United States. So, how that kind, how this kind of affects this story is because these were not official religions of the states, they were oftentimes they had a fundamental reason to want a separation of church and state, because if they could remove established state religions, they could they could actually gain official uh, official congregation and expand further out west, especially in the uh, Ohio territories that that the United States won and got to keep thanks to the American Revolution, the Seven Years War, and the War of 1812. So, alongside this, you also had the Enlightenment where a lot of people were deist or they believed in creator being, but after creation they left or they no longer have any influence on this world. And during the revolution, these two groups were able to agree on something. They wanted the United States to be a vision of Sir Thomas More's utopia. And along this time, a lot of the Commonwealth or um, writings against the monarchy that date back to um, the English Civil War was still making its way through the 13 colonies. And, and alongside this, a lot of the, during the revolution, it also kind of doubled as a civil war between militias, neighbor against neighbor, even families. Just look at the Franklins, who Ben Franklin and his son broke off ties because of who they sided with during the revolution. And so, because of all this, we see a destruction of the established church orders. The Church of England, obviously, was influence was basically gone a- after the revolution, and in its place we had the Episcopal Church, but because of Thomas Jefferson's time in writing the Virginia State Constitution, where it did remove a established church. This kind of set the idea that a lot of states will want to try and move away from established churches and religions. Alongside this, while not a huge presence, and while it had important figures, it, it did, this group did not have a huge influence on any of these proceedings. 
you also had a very, very small, barely, not even 1%, more like 0.1% of the population was Jewish, and a lot of times, because England itself did not pass Jewish emancipation, or Great Britain didn't pass Jewish emancipation yet, there was a Jewish population that wanted to ensure their freedoms that they had during the time of the colonies, like their protected status, their right to have freedoms of trade, practice, civil rights, got to be carried over in the United States. And for the most part, it did. Some states found ways to pass religious laws by arguing whatever was in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights more applied to the federal government than it did the states. But these loopholes and holdovers of state religions, like there was in the North, keeping some state religions until the 1820s, 1830s, like, it was on the way out. The practice of established religions in the United States was on the way out. And a lot of this had to do with the the Great Awakening's influence on, on dissent and centralized authority during the American Revolution and early constitutional period. And while we don't know, it's hard to say what was exactly said or done during the Constitutional Convention, but as far as we can tell, everyone agreed that there was a lot of religious diversity now in the United States, and, and alongside that, there was still the Deists and other groups that they had to consider. So, it sort of made sense. And alongside this, the Methodists, the Baptists, all these groups made alliance with figures like Thomas Jefferson, who were borderline atheists. They agreed that they did not want to establish religion, so they made basically made an alliance with each other to prevent one. And a lot and and also they didn't really want to centralize federal government. So they worked well together, especially when it came to fighting against figures like John Adams, Hamilton. And while and while there this is an odd alliance, it was an alliance agreed on the shared principle that there needs to be some form of religious freedom and counterbalance against established religions. Well, uh, hopefully that's a good introduction into religious influence during the revolution, pre-revolution, and constitutional and early republic period. If you want to know more about this stuff, I will link some sources in the bottom.